In this video, we're going to talk about um, a function and the relationship of a function to both its first derivative and its second derivative. Specifically, we'll talk about when f is increasing, decreasing, and constant, and also when, also when f is concave up or concave down. We'll also talk another, about another special kind of point that's called an inflection point. First, we're going to talk about the relationship between f and f prime. Uh, let's say that I have f prime in blue, and let's say that f prime is positive, uh, just in this little region. Well, if I graph f, that means that f is going to have a positive slope at all these points. Uh, notice that it's always going to be constant here. But the, the characteristic of f that we're looking at is that f is always increasing. And so we have our first relationship that says that if f is increasing, that means that f prime is bigger than zero, or vice versa. If f prime is bigger than zero, that means that f is increasing. The two are essentially interchangeable. Similarly, we have that if f is decreasing, then f prime is less than zero. And we could tie this back into slopes, like if f prime is less than zero, that means we have a negative slope, so it means that we're decreasing. And then the last uh, possibility is that f prime equals zero, and if f prime equals zero, that means that f is going to be constant because it has a slope of zero. Also, let's remember our definition of a critical point because it's sort of related to this. Remember that a critical number is where the derivative of f, where f prime of c is zero or undefined. So we had that relationship there. Let's look at a few examples. Uh, let's say that this is my derivative. Uh, and so like before, uh, if this is f prime, notice that the slope is always the same value and it's constant. So my function could look like this. Okay. Uh, because here, that the value of the slope is always the same number. Slope is like 1, slope is 1, slope is 1, etc. And so we get that f prime is just that function. Um, I could do something like this, where f prime starts out positive and then switches to negative. Let's see what f does. Well, here, f, is, uh, f prime is positive, and so that means that f is going to be increasing increasing, increasing, up to this point right here, and then it's going to stop increasing. And then after this, it's going to be decreasing because it's going to start having a negative slope. And so you could think of this as like the uh, a flipped upside down absolute value graph. Um, and so notice that it's not differentiable at that sharp turn, but uh, on the top here, the slopes are increasing, or not increasing, the slopes are positive, and then on the other side, the slopes are negative. Unfortunately, in calculus, sometimes the functions that we deal with aren't always straight lines. Sometimes we have curved lines. Well, the simplest curved line is a parabola. So we're going to look at um, the equation of y equals x squared. Let's go ahead and graph its first derivative. Remember that the first derivative, y prime, is just 2x. So we'll go ahead and graph that. There it is. So notice a couple things. First of all, um, if we are... If x is less than 0, then this is where f prime is less than 0, which means that f is decreasing. And we notice that on the, on the graph, because if x is less than 0, notice that f is always decreasing in this interval. It's going down, 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 down. Once y prime becomes positive, for x greater than 0, notice how it's positive over here, then f turns around and f starts increasing on this interval, like that. Um, and in this picture, we're also going to focus on the properties of the second derivative. Recall that the second derivative of x squared, you just take the derivative again, so y double prime is just going to be 2. And if I graph the line y equals 2, I get this. So what's special about this line? Well, first of all, notice that f double prime is always greater than 0. Okay, And if we notice something about the graph, notice that the graph of y equals x squared is always curved. right? And it's always curved upwards into this nice, 
happy, slightly demonic-looking smiley face. In any case, this brings us to the relationship between F and F double prime. In the picture, we said that um, F was curved upwards. The actual math word for that is concave up. So we say that F is concave up if f double prime is greater than zero. Again, these two are interchangeable, so you have to see, if you ever see f prime greater than zero, you need to think concave up and vice versa. Conversely, f is concave down if f double prime is less than zero. So that's a, uh, a downwards uh, curved shape like that. And just like with f prime, uh, when f prime equaled zero, we had a critical point, or a critical number, um, here, when f double prime changes sign, uh, we have a special kind of point, and it's called an inflection point. Okay, um, now notice that this is f prime simply changing sign, not necessarily f prime equals zero. Um, so one way you can find a, uh, an inflection point is by setting f prime to equal zero, but you have to also check that f prime is in fact changing sign at that point. We'll figure out how to do that in the next section. Essentially, inflection points are possible where f double prime equals zero or f double, uh, the second derivative, is undefined. This brings us to one of my favorite pictures in calculus. Um, and it's sort of a, it's a generic picture, but it has all the things that we just talked about all in sort of one thing. So I start with axes, and then my original function f of x, usually a cubic suffices nicely for this. Um, so I, I have a cubic here, and um, I'm going to label a few points. Here's a, this one will be b, and this will be c. Okay, and so uh, let's, let's notice a few things. First of all, let's find out where f is increasing and decreasing. Well, let's start here. Um, I like to think about like a mountain climber when I think about increasing and decreasing, and I always go like I'm reading, so I go from left to right. So I'm a mountain climber, and I'm, I'm climbing up the mountain, so clearly f is increasing at this point. Um, and in fact, on this interval. And the interval is going to be from negative infinity to, well, when, do, when does he stop climbing and start to fall? Well, he, starts, he stops climbing at A. And so F is increasing, F increasing on negative infinity to A. Okay, that's the first place where he stops increasing. Then he's going to fall down, whoosh, 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 down here at C. And then he's going to start increasing again, because he's got to start climbing up that next infinitely long hill, or whatever. And so we're going to be increasing on C to positive infinity. So it's in, F is increasing on negative infinity to A, and C to positive infinity. Well, we know that the derivative of a cubic is a, uh, a quadratic, so let's figure out what the quadratic would look like. Well, I know that the slope here and the slope here at the, the, the hill and the valley are both zero. So that means that the derivative, f prime, is zero between both of those points. And we also said that f was increasing um, in the region to the, to the left of a. Remember that if f is increasing, that means that f prime has to be greater than zero. totally messed up my color scheme, so we're going to change it. F prime is blue. 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 That means that F... So if F is increasing, that means that F prime is greater than zero. And so it's a quadratic, so it's either got to go like down like this. That doesn't work, because here this isn't a positive value. So it has to go the other way. It's got to go up like this. So it goes up, and then through the other point, and then up again. And so you can see on the picture that this region of the parabola, the y values are positive, so the slope of f is positive, which means that f is increasing, like that. Then we're going to graph the second derivative, and we'll do that in red. Uh, and the derivative of a quadratic is a linear function, so we're going to go ahead and graph that. Notice that the slope here is 0, 
And so uh, I'm going to graph a, a linear function that goes through that, just like that. Okay, we'll kind of make it... Okay, that's pretty pretty linear. Go with it. Um, so now let's notice the relationship between f double prime and f prime, which was in blue. Okay, so now notice, if we go back here... Oops, I did the wrong thing. If we go back here to this relationship, if f is increasing, then f prime is greater than zero. That's also true for the first derivative and the second derivative. If f prime is increasing, that means that f double prime has to be greater than zero, because the relationship between f prime and f double prime is a derivative, just like between f and f prime. So if we look at our picture back here at the end, oops, too many, uh, notice that when f prime is positive from b onwards, f, sorry, when f double prime is positive from b onwards, notice that f prime is increasing right there from b upwards to infinity. Okay, and same thing on the other side. If f double prime is negative, here it's less than zero, f double prime, that means that f prime is decreasing, and so you can see that here. Furthermore, we can also notice the relationship between f double prime and the original function in black. Okay, check it out. Remember that from b onwards to infinity, f prime is greater than zero. And we said earlier that if f prime sorry, f double prime, I keep misspeaking. If f double prime is greater than zero, that means that f is concave up. Let's try to notice that in the graph. Well, from here onwards to here is where f double prime is greater than zero. If I look at the graph of f, notice that this corresponding point from here onwards to the right, notice that it's got that upwards uh, happy face there, uh, which means that f is in fact concave up on that interval. And uh, if I notice the other side, notice that here, when f double prime is negative, that means that f should be concave down, or like droopy, sad face. Uh, it is. Notice that f here is curving downwards on that side of the interval. Um, and so you could do like a, a, a sad face like that. And here at B is a very special point. Notice that F double prime is changing from negative values to positive values. Oh, well, let's see. That means that F double prime is changing sign, which means that it's an inflection point. Ooh. So an inflection point is where F double prime changes from positive to negative or negative to positive. But on the graph of F, it means that f is changing from being concave down over here. It stops being concave down and curving downwards and starts being concave upwards. Okay, And so that's like the big picture relationship, the connection between f and f double prime. The last thing I'm going to do in here is just uh, do a quick chart to su basically summarize all the properties and how they all relate to each other. So if f double prime is positive, that means that f is concave up. Um, it also means that f prime is increasing because the relationship between f prime and f double prime is a derivative relationship. Okay, and similarly if f double prime is negative, that means that f prime is decreasing, which means that f is concave down. So all three things of these are equivalent. You could say that f prime is positive. You could say that f prime sorry, f double prime is positive, f prime is increasing, or f itself is concave up. That's the first relationship. We also have that if f prime is positive, then f is increasing, and if f prime is negative, then f is decreasing. That's almost it on the chart for now. I just want to add one more thing in terms of wording. Um, notice here that uh, f is increasing or no, not f is increasing, but if f is concave up, concave up is the same as increasing at an increasing rate. And the reason that concave up is the same as increasing at an increasing rate is because if you look at f prime, f prime is the rate 
of increase of f, because it's the slope which is the derivative, hence prime. But if f prime is increasing, that means as time goes by, here we were increasing at this rate, but later on we're increasing at a faster rate because the f prime itself it has a higher value. So that means that the slope of f keeps getting bigger and bigger, hence increasing at an increasing rate.